Welcome to the Good Fight Radio Show, a program dedicated to bringing you vital and uncompromised truths that you won't hear in the mainstream media, discussing contemporary issues in light of the Bible and how these issues relate to family, culture, and the church. The heart of this show is to glorify Jesus Christ and expose the works of darkness as He is commanded in Ephesians 5.11. Now here's your host, Good Fight Ministries' own Chad Davidson. Welcome back to the Good Fight Radio Show. I am your host, Chad Davidson of Good Fight Ministries. And with me, as always, is the president and founder of Good Fight Ministries and pastor of Blessed Hope Chapel in Simi Valley, California. Pastor Joe Schumann, how are we doing today? Having a beautiful day, bro. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Also with us, as always, is the show's producer, Tony Palacio. How are you doing today? Happy New Year. I'm doing great. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hey, your voice sounds a little bit better, uh, you know, but uh, yeah, Tony's been fighting some sickness, so we're keeping him in prayer. Mm-hmm. And at a distance. At a, and a distance. <laughs> at, at, a, at a loving distance. Uh, you know, and I hugged him, and I'm even using a pen because my other one went out. His uh, pen, yes. Using yeah, his ask pen. me who's throwing up or not, because then I've washed my hands afterwards. But. <laughs> Well, we are excited. Yes, as Tony said, Happy New Year, guys. We we are really excited. This, if you're listening to this, you are listening to this on New Year's Day, and that is so much better than watches the Roses Parade. And it should start around the same time. Um, we should. This uh, usually airs around six a.m. Uh, does that make it three a.m. on the East Coast? Is that right when it when it first comes out? Or Tony, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yep. that's right. So you East Coasters, typically, you know, I wake up around five thirty, and a lot of times it's already shared by a number of our good friends over there on the on the East Coast. Amen. So, we love Great. you guys. We're so blessed by you guys. We're always encouraged. I, I get tagged in posts. I know Tony gets tagged in posts, too. Uh, mm-hmm. Now you guys have found us on Facebook, and uh, we love you guys, and, and we're, we're, we're really, really blessed uh, by you guys. And, and guys, today we are going to talk a little bit about New Year's, but most of all, we're going to talk about Jesus. Um, that's the most important Amen. thing. And when it comes to that, I, I was thinking about uh, a number of verses, and we had gone out uh, a number of us from from the church here, we went out to do some prison ministry. And something I thought about is, you know, what they can do to redeem their time. And it's a verse that I think about a lot because as a ministry, Ephesians 5 is something that we talk about a lot, specifically Ephesians 5.11, um, that we're supposed to expose the unfruitful deeds of darkness and have no fellowship with it. Okay, and not only that, but in the course of those verses, it talks about a number of really interesting topics. And one of those is, talks about awaking, O sleeper, arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. And then it says, therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise. And then this verse is something that I think is very applicable to, you know, counting your year ahead of you. And this is what it says in that context, making the most of your time because the days are evil. And you guys, I, I really want to put that out to you. I, I want to I say this. I have gone, and this will be the first year, I think in four or five years, that I haven't taken a, a college or high school group up to Big Bear uh, for the New Year's. And we're going to do a little thing down here between the college and uh, middle school group. Joe may not know, but we're taking his house over for the <laughs> New Year's uh, and going to do a little thing there with all the all the guys around here. And something um, I've done in the past, we've written down names of people we want to see saved uh, over the course of this year. We want to pray for this certain person and write that person's name down or and put it on your, um, you know, whatever wherever you get ready in the morning or put it on the back of your phone and say, I'm going to pray about this person every single day this year. I want them to come to Christ. That's something we've done. Amen. And then something I've done as well is say, hey, what is your spiritual goal? And for three years, I wrote the same one, and it was get Joe to start a podcast. And that one came into fruition this last year. So no need to go to Big Bear. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but no, that was literally a prayer. And I know a lot of you guys who have talked to me online and said, man, I'm really blessed by the show. When I say it means a lot, I'm not, that's not lip service. It means a lot because it's something that I have prayed about for a number of years because I believe that as a ministry, because of the cutting edge things that we do and we talk about and the issues that we talk about, not in a, you know, we talk in a, a level and a manner that's hopefully not over your head that you guys can understand, but also gets deep as well. So we get you deep in the waters and shallow enough that you can swim. So I, I'm been really excited about that and really encouraged and praise God. It only took three years for my resolution to be resolute, <laughs> but I think that was the that's Lord. What you're doing, huh, bro? Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah. So, so praise God, and and I'm really excited also to dig into the to the Word today to talk about Jesus and and really where our focus should be. So, Joe, with all that introduction, let's have at it. Yeah, I've been praying <laughs> about a couple different New Year's messages, and this may this will be you'll be hearing this probably right after the New Year, even though we're recording it uh, the week before. 
Uh, I'm still praying about Sunday's message, so it may be similar to this. It may not. Uh, one of the messages or series I did last year that blessed a lot of people, far more than I thought it would, I think I did like eight different messages, was on Second Peter chapter 1. Mm. And we went through the different steps of spiritual growth, adding to your faith various things, you know. Brother love and kindness and all these things. Now, and Tony, maybe you could throw that up. I think I might have posted earlier is Chuck Estrada's illustration of that. One of our, our worship leaders uh, with alongside mm-hmm. Tony drew out a absolute it, – it's beautiful to see how he took his notes through the pillars of faith through that series. And Yeah, so that, that was pretty stunning. That yeah. was pretty amazing. I didn't know what you were going to bring up. But, Tony, yeah, that was cool. I'm yeah. trying to do a Photoshop version of it, and uh, <laughs> maybe I'll, I'll post both because they're both really – Really cool, the original drawing. That you know what? I'll have to awesome. bring you guys another one that was sent to me from a brother who is actually in prison. And oh, wow. it's on my desk. My wife uh, printed it out from her phone. She sent it to me on the phone. It looks way better than the printout on the phone. Uh, and it's like a, almost looks like a board game. And it has all those different communicable attributes that God gives us by from his the same divine series. nature. Same series. <laughs> oh, and wow. it looks like you're on the game of life or something. And he goes through this trail. And it's actually really cool. The way he has these signs, and then you add this to your faith, and you add this to your faith, and you add this to your faith. And the brother uh, that sent it to me was a brother that went through that message. God had really impacted him through that series. Uh, and then uh, he had to take care of some things that, you know, had happened in the past uh, that he wasn't, from my understanding, he wasn't necessarily even guilty of. I didn't know the, the exact story, but uh, he had to take care of it. He'd been running from it in the past, and he went to another state, and he's taking care of that right now. And it was really awesome to see. I think uh, he sent it to his wife, and then his wife sent it to me. Or I'm not sure exactly how my wife and I got it. We both got it on our phone. But it was so. It's funny you brought that up. I forgot about <laughs> Chuck's. Chuck's is incredibly impressive. He's an artist. Mm-hmm. This guy's an artist too. I was like, wow. You know, I was like, wow. This is so. But he was showing me how intang- how tangibly this series had stuck in his heart and mind, and had impacted him for spiritual growth. So you guys might want to check out if you haven't heard that series, or it's been some time yeah. since you heard it. Uh, there's a lot of people in our fellowship who had let me know that uh, they really grew in their walks with the Lord through that. So it's a very practical way of just adding different things to your faith. And we go step by step through what Peter talks about to grow in your faith there. So this year I thought, you know, maybe I could recap that series. But I thought, you know what? I don't really want to recap that series, but I want to talk about a word that's used in Second Peter. And we'll trace some of those verses I went through, but I want to focus more on a, spe- a specific thing. Uh, that Peter talks about. He talks about adding to your faith these different virtues, right? Uh, but one of the things he mentions is a- adding uh, knowledge to you. But the word knowledge he uses there, I don't want to emphasize as much as another word he uses for knowledge right before and right after that. But I want to talk about, you know, five or six different Greek words for knowledge. And if you look at the Greek word studies on knowledge, usually people talk about three words, maybe four. But there's six, I think, that are very fascinating. And I just know after we deal with four or three people say, well, what about this one perhaps? And, or what about that one? So I thought I'll deal with all six to one degree, but I really want this to be about knowing Jesus, knowing Jesus for the new year, making sure you know Jesus, making sure that listening to these podcasts, you know, going to church, a fellowship with brothers and sisters is not just some kind of treadmill that you're on, but you're actually pursuing Jesus. You actually know him because the Bible says, Jesus said, this is eternal life that they might know thee, the only true God and, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Paul said that I might know him, you know. Uh, Peter talked about how we need to grow in the knowledge of Jesus. And Paul said, God wills that all be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. But there's different Greek words used for, that are translated knowledge. And the Greek language in many ways is so much richer than the English language. And when you look at those different nuances between the Greek words, they become becomes really eye-popping. And you'll never look at some of these texts again in the same way. So as we approach this new year, uh, a lot of people have a lot of different goals, but I don't think there's any goal. And I think you guys would agree, and hopefully all of our audience would agree, there's no greater goal we should seek to achieve than having a better relationship with Jesus. Amen. So I thought, you know, let's go in the new year pursuing him, you know, getting excited about him. I mean, the one who made us, the one who gave his life for us, the one who redeemed us with his blood, the one who sustains us, the one who protects us, the one who uh, prepared a place for us, you know, let's, let's know him better, you know. And uh, so I want to get into that a little bit. And there's there's about six different Greek words in the New Testament, uh, and many of them will be are in, are used in Second uh, Peter and elsewhere in the salvific passages of the New Testament. But let me first read Second Peter chapter two. Well, you know what? Let me just mention those words real quick. One is the word gnosis. That's the very common Greek word. That's just it means 
you know, sometimes it, the word gets a bad rap because the Gnostics took their name from Gnosis, but a transliteration of the word Gnosis is to know, you know, and it just simply means to know. Uh, it's about knowing facts for the most part. It's a, the, the Greek word uh, Gnosis is the noun, uh, and Gnosin, Gnosis, and it's like two plus two equals four. It's about knowing certain facts and certain scientific facts. Uh, the next Greek word we want to talk about is gnosko. And gnosko is the verb form of gnosis. And in Greek, the verbs and the nouns could be quite different in their meanings. In fact, uh, when you study the certain Greek words throughout the New Testament, you'll see that there's times where the Greek word is used in a certain way that the noun is never used. Like, you know, episunagoge, you know, or being gathered to Christ, you know. It's never used of a spiritual, uh, uh, in, in a metaphorical way. It's always used of, uh, in the sense of, you know, a holy convocation, or it's used in a, or maybe a, a, a you know, the, the word gathering there. Although the noun could be used in a, in a, in a different way. So it's interesting when you look at the different Greek words. A gnosko is not just the assertion of facts, that the knowing of certain facts, but it has a relation. It's about a relational knowledge. It has more of a relational, like knowing persons. You know, gnosko has this a, a deeper the verb gnosko. Some of these are really cool sounding words too. I love a lot of the Greek words, gnosko. It refers to uh, relational knowledge. Then there is epinosis. And gnosis is knowledge, but epinosis is, the word epa means upon or it's an intensifier, like epidural, epicenter. It intensifies the, the next word. Ep, epinosis refers to an experiential knowledge. It's not just about knowing something, but it's about knowing things by way of, similar to gnosko, relating to them in a deeper way, and it's often used of knowing a person or people or God. The next word is oida. Oida is a very common word. When you go through the Greek New Testament, it means to perceive, uh, to know, to know something. Uh, it's similar to gnosis, but it has more to do with having a, a bit of a fuller knowledge often than gnosis. Then there's epistemi. And epistemi, and I'd love to get deeper into some of the English words we get from... Like, Epistemology. Exactly. <laughs> and this is a word that's not very common, but... It's a word that's not typically used in relationship to people, but it's used in relationship, again, to... It's actually from epa. There, that is, again, the, the meaning upon. And the verb histomy, meaning to stand. And it means to, to, to know in a, a quite a bit different sense than to have knowledge gained through experience. It has more to do with uh, not knowing persons as much as uh, having knowledge of facts, kind of like more like gnosis in a sense, but uh, it's used more in relationship to... Uh, facts than, say, gnosko and epinosis, and even oida. Oida is often used, even though it has to do with perception. Uh, ep epistemi, epistemi has to do with knowing certain facts as well. In fact, it's interesting, but it could be used of knowing people, but that's more rare. In Acts, 7, or Acts 19, uh, we see Paul's, uh, the demons that Paul's dealing with this demoniac, and I know it's gnosko, I know Jesus, and I recognize epistemi, epistemi Paul. But who are you? You know, mm, that's interesting. It's very interesting, isn't it? Because yeah. then it's who are you? Meaning, I don't have an epistemological or epista my knowledge of you or a gnosko knowledge of you. So we go to Second Peter, though. This is interesting. It's interesting. We start look down at, looking at this breakdown of words. But before we go to Second Peter, because I was thinking of the New Year and how these Greek words play out in the New Testament, the word gnosko. Keep in mind, gnosko is a relational knowledge, a deeper knowledge than say just simply. Gnosis, the noun, the verb has the idea of actually having a relationship with uh, the object that bears a certain amount of knowledge. And Paul states in second, or in Philippians chapter 3, he, this is after he gives his pedigree, his spiritual pedigree of having all these, uh, being a Hebrew of Hebrews. He literally says he circumcised the eighth day uh, from the nation of Israel, from the tribe of Benjamin. He talks about being a Hebrew of Hebrews, uh, 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 as the law of Pharisee. He says, a persecutor of the church. This is before he became a Christian, of course. Uh, as the law, he was found blameless. He starts going through all these things that people would hold in high esteem in the first century. But he says, but whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Verse 8. More than that, I count all things to be loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them but rubbish or dung in the King James that I may gain Christ. Now look at this in verse 9. And may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes, which comes from God on the basis of faith. Now listen to verse 10, brothers and sisters. That I may know him, gnosko, 
And it's just a beautiful Greek word, the verb, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. He wants to have a, be resurrected with him and the fellowship of his sufferings, enter into his sufferings and being conformed to his death. And he's talking about knowing these things, the verb, gnosko, and knowing Christ, in order that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. And that's literally in the Greek, the out-resurrection, which is a whole other thing. But it's a fascinating little play on words there as well. But here we have gnosko, and Paul's overriding desire was to know Jesus and to, to, to have a relationship with Jesus. And it's not enough, brothers and sisters, to just know about him. The demons know about Jesus, you know. Uh, the demons, uh, they believe and tremble, but they're not saved. Amen. We need to make sure we have a gnosko of Jesus, but not just a gnosko. Uh, we need to have that gnosko for sure, but also described with the word epinosis, that 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 relational knowledge and that deeper experiential knowledge, and which basically they complement one another. Now listen to Second Peter chapter one, guys, because this 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 particular epistle brings out a few of these Greek words that are pretty awesome. So gnosis, I know it's a little technical, but it's not over your heads if you just pay attention. Gnosis, where we get know from, just means fact knowledge. Gnosko, the verb, not the noun. Gnosis is the the noun, or nosin, it's gnosis and nosin. The, the, the verb is gnosko, that's relational knowledge. Epinosis is experiential knowledge, also with the idea of relational knowledge. Oida is to perceive something, to come to know something. Epistemi is to know a, a body of facts, you know, uh, similar to uh, gnosis in a way, which is, as I said, two plus two equals four. So if we go to Second Peter now, chapter one, listen to this. Simon Peter, because Peter, God by his Holy Spirit, wants us to epinosis Jesus. That's the key. You can't just know who Jesus is. As we say often, God doesn't have any grandchildren. You know, he has children. You can't come to relationship with God or get in based on the faith of your parents. You have to make sure that you have become a child of God. Jesus said, the scripture say in John 1, 12, I'm sorry, as many as received him, he gave the right to become the children of God. Galatians 3 says that we're children of God. Of, of, of Abraham and children of God through faith. But you want, Jesus said on the judgment day, many will say, Lord, Lord, but he'll say, I never knew you. You want to make sure you know Jesus. As I mentioned earlier, John 1, 17, or John, John 17, 3, this eternal life that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. But it's interesting, not only is that word epinosis, uh, or I should say gnosko used in John, I'm sorry, Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, that I might know him, Paul says, right? And the, and the, and the power's resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings made conformable to his death. In John 73, when Jesus said, this is the eternal life, that they may know, the Greek word again is gnosko, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have yes. sent. You want to gnosko Jesus. You don't want to just hear about him. You don't want to just hear this podcast and say, wow, I'm learning so much. You want to make sure you're, you're seeking the Lord in prayer. You want to make sure you have a relationship with Jesus. You want to make sure that you're taking time to cultivate that relationship and grow in the knowledge of Christ and talk to him. You know, you could be married to a wife that you never talked to all your life. You don't really know her. Okay. Uh, that'd be a shame. Even a greater shame. If you've heard about Jesus all your life, you even go to church, you listen to some pretty cool podcasts, but you never talked to him. You never really got to know him. You want to make sure you can know Jesus. You epinosis Jesus. Now check this out, guys. Second Peter chapter one. Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have received a faith of the same kind as ours. That's a true faith, right? By the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge. Guess what the Greek word there is, guys? In the epinosis. That's that experiential knowledge. Not just knowing about Jesus, but actually having a relationship with him. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. You want grace in your life? God's unmerited favor, his forgiveness. You want peace? Peace with God comes through the cross and what Jesus did on Calvary. Grace and peace be multiplied. Do you want it multiplied to you? What a blessing that would be for the new year. Amen. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the epinosis. Epa, again, is an intensifier word. Epidural, ep, you know, epidemic, you know, epicenter. Epinosis has to do with a deep experiential knowledge of the Lord, having a relationship with him. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the epinosis of our God and of Jesus our Lord, seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life 
and godliness through the true, there it is again, guys, through the true epinosis, through the true knowledge, through the true knowledge or through the true epinosis of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. We partake of his divine nature. That's Christ in us, the hope of glory. We don't become divine, but the Holy Spirit, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit live in us. And he communicates the, the attributes. And then we talk about those those incommunicable attributes. You know, certain things about God that we never receive because they belong to God alone. But there's certain things like the fruit of the Spirit that God shares with us, us through his divine nature. But that comes and is mediated to us by his grace through faith as we grow in our epinosis, experiential knowledge, and we relate to Jesus. We cry out to the Father in the name of Jesus through prayer. We depend on him. We surrender to him. We look to the finished work of the cross uh, for our justification. We, we pursue sanctification as we pursue to be holy and be like him and be transformed into his image. Amen. For by these, now let me read the two epinosis again, just in verse 2 and 4, to get this through our heads. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the epinosis, or the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ, seeing that his divine nature has granted to us everything that pertains to life and godliness through the true epinosis, verse 3, of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. For by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises. Mm-hmm. Brothers and sisters, God, God has precious and magnificent promises for you so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. Now guess how he descri- how does he describe the believer here? One who has faith, one who has uh, been set free from the corruption, he says, that is in the world by lust, through what? The true epinosis, through a true relationship, a relational knowledge, and experiential knowledge with Jesus. Then he says, now for this very reason, or for this very reason also, apply in all diligence. We need to be diligent about this. In your faith, so you trust in Jesus. He already said these are partakers of the same faith that Peter has. In your faith, supply moral excellence. Add moral excellence. And I don't have time to get all these Greek terms. We, we explicate them uh, in some depth as I go through the series uh, in eight different messages as we look at each one of these. But supply moral excellence. How do you supply it? It comes from his divine nature, guys. It comes from his uh, magnificent, his precious and magnificent promises. They're for you. They're already yours. If you're a believer, they're just waiting to be manifested in your life. So we go, it goes on to say, and to your moral excellence, you're supposed to add knowledge. Okay? And now verse 6, it uses the word knowledge. Now, this will help us understand it. For this reason, make every effort or in all diligence add to your add to moral excellence knowledge. The Greek word right there is not epinosis. It's gnosis. Why? Because once you've moved into a relationship with Jesus Christ, and you're growing and you're knowing him. And you have this experiential knowledge because you've, you've embraced him. You've called out to him for forgiveness of your sins because you've come to the knowledge of the depths of your depravity and that you need God's grace. He said, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Save me. I'm a sinner. And when he saves you, and you begin to experience his forgiveness through faith in him and you start to follow him. You have that epinosis. Now, guess what? You add moral excellence. You say, I need to grow and become more like Jesus. If you're going to grow in moral excellence, what do you need to do, though? You need to gain, gain more gnosis, more general knowledge of what it means to be like Jesus. That's where the, the, the typical general word for gnosis comes in. Now I need to, what does it mean to become more like Jesus? What does his word say? What, what's the knowledge of God and so forth? So then you add gnosis to your epinosis. And then he goes on to say, and to true knowledge, uh, of, uh, true knowledge, he says, you're supposed to continue to add not only to the, no, the, ex, the moral excellence knowledge, but in your knowledge, self-control. Okay, now you have moral excellence. Now you know what the difference between right and wrong is. Now have self-control. Okay, you need self-control now to act on that knowledge, right? And your self-control perseverance. It's great to have self-control, right? Some of you are like, man, why is he giving this message? It's the first year, man, I've been so out of control eating or whatever you've been doing. (laughs) Hey, you know what? Now we need self-control. Lord, give us more self-control. We need it back then. We need it more now. But now let's have perseverance. So if it's a new year for you and you're like, man, you know what? I'm definitely growing in my, I definitely need more self-control. Pray for it. It's there for you. And then persevere in it. Say, Lord, help me have perseverance. I'm right with you, man. I lost a good amount of pounds. And man, all the pumpkin pies started coming in. And <laughs> let's see candy. And I'll, I'll, Lord, God, have mercy, you know. And uh, so I'm like, Lord, you know, help me, you know, lose a few pounds again. Praise God, I didn't gain <laughs> a lot back, but too many. And in your perseverance, godliness. And I want to go through these, but I'm not going to get to the crux of a lot of what I'm going to say. And in your godliness, that becomes becoming more like Jesus. And in your godliness, brotherly kindness, you know. Be, we have brotherly kindness and your brotherly kindness, love, you know, not just phileo, brotherly kindness, 
brotherly love, but also agape love, the fruit of the Spirit love, the love that comes directly from the Lord. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they render you neither useless nor unfruitful in the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in verse 9, when he uses the term true knowledge, he uses, uh, and then in verse, well, let's, let me keep reading. Verse 9, he says, for he who lacks these qualities is blind. So if you're not growing in these qualities, you're blind or short-sighted, having forgotten his purification from his former sins. Is he talking about a lost person here that was never saved, that was never forgiven of his sins? Mm-hmm. No. Says he's forgotten his purification from his former sins. He's talking about someone who experienced epinosis, experiential knowledge of Jesus, saving knowledge, and then has forgotten that he was forgiven of his sins. Therefore, brethren, be all the more diligent to make certain about his calling and choosing you. For as long as you practice these things, you will never stumble or you will never fall. Verse 11, for in this way, the entrance to the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ, will abundantly be supplied to you. In this way, through what way? Through growing in the grace and growing through the faith. And uh, these things is really what it can say in the Greek. A lot of some Greek interpreters understand it this way. These things will be abundantly supplied to you. This list of how you grow spiritually, not by a work trip, but by seeking him in faith. This would be the evidence of your faith, that you're continuing the faith, that these things will be abundantly supplied to you, that you can have this wonderful entrance into God's kingdom. Now, uh, I know we just have a few more minutes, and that went so quick. But let me just share a few <laughs> He's things. He's following through pages right yeah, now. Yeah, so you know, I'm, I'm passing that. a few pages real quick. Catch okay. the Sunday message if you missed it. Maybe I'll do this message. Or I'm also catch, about it. catch the entire series that we oh, have yeah. for Don't you Don't miss that series. You'll grow dramatically yeah. because so many people did. But that word epinosis of use, is used of salvation over and over again. Listen to this. First Timothy 2.4 says that God desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. I mean, the lost, he wants to be saved and how? To come to the epinosis of the truth. Epinosis is used of salvation. Second Timothy 2.25, it talks about a, a, a apostate with gentleness correcting those who are in opposition and perhaps God may grant them a change of mind leading to an experiential knowledge, an epinosis of the truth. Second Timothy three five or three seven talks about those in the last days. They're going after their bachelors, they're going after their masters, they're going after the doctorate. It says they'll always be learning, but not able, never able to come to the epinosis of the truth. Paul uses epinosis as a term of saving knowledge. And why is this so important? This is so important because look what can happen to you if you forget that you've been purified from your past sins. Second Peter two twenty says this. If they have escaped the corruption of the world by knowing, this NIV, because it translates the word epinosis, knowing right there, which is a really good translation, because it's more than just knowledge, it's a knowing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It says, if they have escaped the corruption of the world, verse 20 of chapter 2 of Second Peter, by knowing epinosis, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and are again entangled in it and are overcome, they are worse off at the end than they were at the beginning. It would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than to have known it and then to turn their backs on the sacred command that was passed on to them. Of them, the Proverbs are true. A dog returns to its vomit and a sow after it is washed returns to her wallowing in the mud. Back to the brother who has experiential knowledge, epinosis, but then forgets that he was washed from his past sins. It's not talking about someone who never had a change of heart. It's talking about one who didn't add to their faith and grow, but had had experiential saving knowledge of Christ, but then went back after they had been washed from their sins and forgot, thus saith the Holy Scripture, the Lord, Second Peter, they forgot the purification of their former sins. Brothers and sisters, I encourage you to go forward in Jesus, press on to the Lord Jesus Christ, like Paul said, that, say that I might know him, amen, gnosko, and that I might press on to have epinosis this, and grow in this experiential knowledge, adding to your faith this year all these be- beautiful, glorious virtues that will help us be strong in the Lord. Keep trusting Jesus. Keep pressing on the faith. We're saved by grace through faith, but a faith that refuses to press on will die. So continue in Jesus that we may continue to have his life. Love you guys. You've been listening to the Good Fight Radio Show brought to you by Good Fight Ministries. If you're blessed by this show and would like to partner with us, won't you consider visiting our support page at goodfight.org? Or you can write to us at P.O. Box 2202, Simi Valley, California, 93062, or call us toll-free at 1-866-JC-TRUTH. That's 1-866-528-7884. We hope you'll tune in next time on the Good Fight Radio Show.